Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to another film, back in another woodland on a beautiful spring morning, I have to say. For photography, not ideal. I've got clear sky above, but it's so nice to be out. And I love woodlands when you've got the bird song going at this time of year. So an interesting start to the day. I jumped out the van this morning, raring to go, raring to get in here. And uh, as I walked down the road, literally 20 yards from the van, I spotted a shot. Uh, I didn't have chance to photograph any sequencing leading up to that shot. I literally got in the field and uh, got set up and uh, took the image. Now I did film a little part of that, so I'm gonna put that on now and I will see you back here in just a second. Really, really pleased with that. I wasn't planning on shooting anything like this this morning. I literally got out of the van, I was heading down the road to the woods and uh, this scene just caught my eye. It just goes to show you can't plan photography. You've just got to react um, in a lot of circumstances to whatever um, reveals itself. And that's exactly what happened here. So this birch tree on the right hand side, it's probably not showing as well on the little video camera compared to where this is set up. The camera here is just focusing on the lower third of the tree. And the tree is set against quite a dark background. And as the sun was coming up, um, it was, and it still is to some degree, it was backlighting all that lovely fresh green foliage that's just coming out on the tree right now. And because it's set against that dark background, it really comes alive. All these grasses that you see in the foreground, these are grass called purple moor grass. And at this time of year, what we've got here is just the dead stems from last year's growth. And because the camera's low, it's just helping to soften the base of the tree rather than it just growing out of just the grassland which it is behind and it's just creating a nice ethereal base to the image. To really capitalise on that I'm using a 160mm lens and I've got the aperture on f5.6 to give me a very narrow depth of field so it throws the background out a little bit just makes it less um, competing for attention and also softens these grasses in the foreground. I have got a polarizer on. It was just helping to get rid of some of the um, some of the hairs as the sun was quite low, and uh, I was also putting my hand just over the lens just to shield the sun um, because the the light was glancing across the front element there. But uh, what an unexpected find and a great start to the morning. And if I don't get anything else today, I'm going to be happy with that. I'm sure. So I'll put that image on now. Well, I hope you liked that shot. What an unexpected find and a great start to the morning. Which leads me on to what I wanted to talk about briefly at the start of today's video, and that's how I rate my images. Now that um, video that I produced last, the one where there was um, the honey fungus strands under the bark, if you've not watched it, I'll put a link above. Really got some great feedback and one or two of you um, referenced it against a Van Gogh painting and one or two of you also referenced it against a process called marquetry. I think I pronounced that right. I'll put a, I'll put a, the, uh, the word just at the bottom of the screen there. And marquetry I think is a process of laying wood on top of wood, different inlays to create patterns. And uh, that's my sort of crude uh, description of, of what I think it is. Um, but really really great feedback from the people that, that say that and it's it's quite flattering when your images get get referenced against the likes of certainly Van Gogh good grief I mean let's get real but um, that leads me on to what I wanted to talk about this morning which is how I rate my images now I generally rate them the same as, as we do on Lightroom and Photoshop 
um, from one to five. And anything below a three completely de gets disregarded for me. And I often say that if I've got to think about an image for more than a couple of minutes, then I need to move on. And those are the images that are sort of one, two, and getting up towards a three that I tend to ignore. Ideally for YouTube, I'm looking for three and a half stroke four star images. And those really great ones come along every once in a while. The five star images are what, what we all are really, really looking for. Now, when I was um, younger, I did quite a bit of metal detecting and I still do some of that from time to time now. And photography for me is very, very similar to metal detecting. It's like a treasure hunt. And I think that's why I enjoy metal detecting. That's why I enjoy photography. And I never get tired of looking for the images because the hunt, the hunt for the treasure is what I get a huge amount of satisfaction from. And uh, obviously finding the treasure, which in this case is the image, is the icing on the cake. But I never get bored of looking um, and, and sort of searching for those little gems that, that might be lying here and there. And that image this morning was one of those little gems that, um, that uh, just really get my, my, uh, my excitement going and uh, really make it all worthwhile. But like I said, the search is just as satisfying for me as finding the actual image. So for YouTube, I'm looking for three and a half stroke four star images on a regular basis. And uh, yeah, those five star images really, really do come along very, very infrequently indeed. So with that in mind, get the tripod and uh, continue on for this morning. And like I said before, if I don't get anything else today, that one will absolutely do me, but uh, let's see how we get on. One of the things I really love about the seasons is that you can come and walk through any one particular path on any one day of the year and it will always be different. 365 days of opportunity of walking through the woodland and spring is a real um, showcase for that because all the time the leaves are constantly changing, they're opening from the new buds and each day that passes is a new opportunity to walk down that same path and look for new images. And I love that about our seasons. It's really, really great for photography. Now, what I will say is that um, I've been out about an hour now and the sun is getting quite high in the sky and already I'm seeing um, quite harsh conditions on the woodland floor and look no further than the side of my face to see what that's like. So I am battling a little bit with the conditions now and it will continue to get harder as the sun gets higher in the sky. But um, I'm going to focus on the shady areas now and uh, but still keeping my eye out for backlit opportunities like we got first thing this morning. Um, not quite as easy in these conditions but uh, they do still exist. But um, certainly the shady areas, look at the difference now on my face. The shady areas are definitely the places to look for images on days like this. I kid you not, you just never quite know when an image is going to reveal itself and I've been walking for quite a while along a boardwalk and I got into that pace where you tend not to see anything and I literally set the camera up just to do a walkthrough shot 
and in doing that it's caused me to linger longer than I have been doing in the last 10-15 minutes and straight away I spot things and it's a lesson to myself again to remind myself to slow down and I know I keep preaching to, to walk slowly and be mindful and look around but even I sometimes get get a bit of a pace on and, and I have to just keep pulling myself back and just purely putting the camera down just then to film myself I did just that and of course I've seen something and I was checking above because there's some larch cones here and I was just looking to see what the particular tree was and of course it's a larch tree typically the boardwalk is over a, an area of wet woodland and larch trees love to have their feet wet and uh, and of course one of the cones has fallen or a little branch with a cluster of cones has fallen onto the mosses here and the mosses have slightly grown through the stems and left potentially a good scene so I'll get the camera out now and have a look and see how it um, see how it looks on the back of the camera can you see me <laughs> so not an easy place to get to the latch cones are just here and uh, I've got the camera set lovely and parallel to the plane of the um, of the mosses the plane of focus is nice and sort of parallel so that I don't have to struggle too much with depth of field. That being said, this is a focus stack and it's an F16. The lens is probably only about eight inches from the subject, so depth of field is really quite shallow and uh, depth of field uh, decreases as magnification increases. So I've got the large cones in the middle of the frame and I've just allowed sufficient amount of moss um, around the outside just to set the, uh, the larch cones within and I've made sure that there's no distractions um, no sort of bits of other items that have fallen from above I want it to be nice and clean I put a polarizer on uh, just to take some of the reflected light off some of the moss um, because it is catching because of the angles of the um, of the moss, lots and lots of different angles to it and it does catch the light and as you can see behind me I've got my white cloth sheet which is just helping to diffuse the light across the scene. Now this is a moss, I'm going to stick my neck out here, I think this is horn calcareous moss or swan neck moss I think, it's a little bit unusual and it's not something that I see all too often although I think the guidebooks would probably suggest that it's quite a common moss but uh, I'm no moss expert but I'm um, trying to get to grips with them trying to learn a few more and I think that's what this is so like I said this is a focus stack and I've started with what I do um, I start with the highest point put my hand in front of the lens and take a test shot so I can see where the stack starts and then I look at the, uh, the cones and I decide which is the highest point and which is the lowest point and I keep those as references and then I take one image at each point all the way down to the very bottom and this particular stack is a stack of six images so I'll, uh, I'll put that on now So I'm sure many of you will be interested in this bit of cloth, probably about 1.5 metres square, something like that. And what I did was I folded one end over at the top and uh, put a, a stitch all the way along. But at intervals, there's four of them, I stitched these little uh, pockets. And uh, what you see there, there's a stick just here. 
and uh, I literally all, all that I do is um, find the top, put the stick in the ground and just literally just stick that over the top and I can create a nice soft area of um, controlled light of my subjects and it, it, it's just a piece of linen and uh, just allows enough light through to really complement the scene and just get rid of any little hot spots and get this pretty much anywhere that sells material and it um, packs down to literally nothing and I always have it in the bag just for days like this when the image would otherwise be really quite difficult to control and I know you can cast your own shadow um, over the subject which does work but nothing beats the soft beautiful light that comes through this piece of linen so there you go bit of a useful tip I think I'm far from a shooting range. A lot of banging going on in the distance over there. So really quite challenging conditions. Oh lovely, Greenwood Pecker. Um, the light is very, very harsh right now. I'm two and a half hours into my, my morning session. And uh, the lovely woodland, absolutely beautiful woodland, but uh, no atmosphere. And all the birches, particularly with their um, silvery bark, as the name suggests, silver birch, really um, difficult to control. You've got to love that bird. Um, difficult to control and like I say, without the atmosphere as well, you just wouldn't even attempt to do the larger scene. The light on the ground is, is just so bright in places, so hot, and even modern sensors will cope to, to make something meaningful out of a large scene in these conditions. Interesting, <laughs> when he's finished, lots of shadows, as you can see in front of him here on the ground, lots of nice shadows on the woodland floor. But again, that contrast, probably just too much to be able to make anything of them. But um, there's some little dikes dotted around with plants growing in them. And um, there's some nice shady areas as well. So I'm just gonna keep my eyes peeled for those fine details and hopefully, find that last image. I'm going for three again today and we've got two now so one more and that should do me. So this is really quite interesting. This next scene I was not expecting and I was walking through the woods just there and it really jumped out at me and hopefully it shows well on the video camera as it does in, in real time. So in the foreground, I'm ignoring all the bracken completely, probably a 16 by nine crop. And here we've got thousands of young birch saplings and when you get down low with the camera, they compress and they form this lovely green line. And hopefully the video camera is low enough to show that. And then if you've not already guessed it, in the background, you've got these lovely, more mature, but still quite young birches with their fresh green foliage at the top that create another green band. And in the middle, um, you've got this darker band where the, uh, where the main stems come up and the green at the top starts to transition. So it's not an immediate fall off stop of green, it transitions to dark and then the green in the foreground all starts to come into play as well. Now I did think when I was talking in the woodland back there that the harsh light would be definitely not something I would want to photograph anymore today, but I stand corrected by that and I think this 
is a really nice image. So, like I say, crop off the foreground, definitely not including any sky. So I will put that shot on now. Well that's it again from me for today folks, don't switch off just yet, images to come right at the very end. If you have enjoyed the video and you want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and uh, ring the bell for notifications. Leave some comments below, let me know what you think of today's images and give the video a nice big thumbs up. So until next time, thank you all so much for watching, bye for now.